Hi everybody, welcome to the latest edition of Return of the Hack, the podcast from E92+. Plus. I'm your host, Neil Langridge, and I'm delighted today to be joined from uh, by Avril from Trend Micro. Hi Avril, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks so much, Neil, for having me here today. No problem. No. Thanks very much for joining us. So uh, again, this is a little bit different from the, the usual episodes we have. We're not going to be talking so much about technology or even products, um, but actually about taking cybersecurity out into the community and leveraging all that kind of expertise and that knowledge that we have. So kind of Avril, if you want to kind of give a little bit of background about yourself, trend, um, and then we'll kind of get into the program. Absolutely. Um, so I've been, uh, I'm, this year, I'm 21 years in Trend Micro. Congratulations. Um, hardcore. Yeah. Um, I've probably worked in every aspect of the business. However, about 14 years, 16 years ago, um, I had very young kids and I began volunteering for something that had just started in trend called the Internet Safety for Kids and Families program. I volunteered, meaning that in my on the couch at night, I'd, you know, start preparing and started going out into schools and built up a, a group of volunteers in the local office here in Cork because I'm based in the Trend Micro office in Ireland. And that was uh, 16 years ago. And uh, I'm now permanently working in that program. And the I guess because I have kids, but you don't have to have children to do and be part and volunteer to be part of the Internet Safety for Kids and Families program. Um, Trend Micro are a global cyber security leader uh, in industry and uh, we have 8,000 employees around the world. We have, uh, it's a billion dollar company. It started out and owned by a married Taiwanese couple based in the US and it started in their sitting room. And that has grown from strength to strength to where it is today. You can imagine going from that to where we are now. Quite a journey, and yeah. Huge. And they are very, very passionate, not just about, we live and breathe security, how to protect, you know, technologies, supports and services to protect our customers all around the world real time. And they are passionate about keeping the Internet a cleaner place. So this is why the Internet Safety for Kids and Families program exists. I'll call it ISKF for short. So our vision, Neil, in trend is to keep the world safe for the exchange of digital information. And yep. with the ISKF program, that translates down to the world's most vulnerable, to everyone in society, whether you're six years of age or you're 97 years of age. Yep. It's important that, you know, we are experts in security. We have a responsibility to our communities all around the world. And that comes in the form of education because you can have all the technology and services and products to support our customers. But so many people out there don't have the knowledge about what they need to know about the risks and threats out there on a daily hourly basis. And if you don't know those fully, then you don't truly understand how to protect yourself and prevent those from happening to you. So in combination with what we, you know, our technology and our services, education is that part that's fundamental to ensure that people understand first what those risks and threats are and then to be aware of their own behaviors as to, you know, I'll be fine. I don't, I don't, I don't the settings are okay. Or I need to be aware of this and understand your motivations and learn to protect yourself and understand the importance of it. So with our ISKF program, um, which is free, everything we do in community all around the world is free. Um, my job is a global program manager for ISKF. So I work currently with 27 countries, Neil. And um, what we do, we've up until this year in 2024, we have reached 4.6 million children, parents, teachers, uh, older adults in our community. And we're very proud of that. And that has grown from strength to strength because of our volunteers. We can't do this without our volunteers and the partner organizations that we work with around the world. And we're very passionate about that. So everything we do, like I said, is free and we have different programs. So, you know, whether it's going talking to children in your school and um, delivering a program in there or teenagers or um, or parents and teachers or older adults. Did you know, Neil, that one in six adults by the year 2030 
will be over 50 years of age. That's, yeah, that's quite, that's quite a surprising statistic. You don't necessarily think of, think of being that, but that is a, that, that's quite a generational shift. Yes, and it'll double by 2050. That's yeah. just two or six. So um, with that in mind, with the aging demographic globally, and you can see it in some countries more prevalent than others at the moment, um, that's why we developed our senior citizens program. But with our focus on education and our passion for it, we do it in four different ways. Education is just one. Innovation, obviously, given the name Trend Micro, it's our middle name, yeah. innovation. So when it comes to our services and our techni technical solutions, that's where our innovation is really important um, to protect our customers and translating that then into, you know, it could be simple things like free tech tools to help you learn more about identity theft yep. or a site safety center where you check, is this website actually OK? You know, just simple yep. free tools just to help onboard them. But our technology, our innovation. So innovation is number one. We're very passionate about that. That's where it all began in a sitting room 35 yep. years ago. Um, and education is the second one. And the third one then is collaboration. So we're not the experts in media literacy, in mental health, in cyberbullying. Um, and that's why it's really important that we collaborate and partner with those organizations internationally, internationally who are the experts. And we cur we're curators of their expertise. And when we do go out into community, so Neil, if you went out next week and I, I gave you the slides and speaker notes and some training and maybe a previous recording, you're going out with expertise, evidence-based research, and it's coming where we are not experts, we have the expertise on board because we've curated that from them, collaborating with them and partnering with them for years, you know? Yeah. Um, so that's the third thing. Uh, and the fourth then is emulate. So we have to practice what we preach. Yep. So I do parent webinars and <clears throat> we have people from UK and Ireland join them with 1600 on the last Zoom webinar. Yeah. Um, and it went on for, I think there was about 300 still on it after an hour and a half. The yep. questions, the answer, you know, it was really, really engaging. And um, it's, it's something that we take pride in. We, we, we're inclusive. We have sign language with us. So we have a sign language interpreter real time with us on the call. If people of different languages are on the call, we can organize for real time interpretation as well. So emulating means that we're talking and we're doing and we're living through examples as well. And it's probably easier for me as a parent and um, that I've been through the experiences myself as a parent and you know, I think it gives parents a lot of comfort to hear that I, I don't get it right and I make mistakes and I make the same mistakes over and over and I've learned from my mistakes and my kids probably teach me more than I teach them. But I do have the tools, the technology and the information to know how best to protect them. Yeah. And do you remember what our number one piece of advice is? For the ISKF program, putting you on the spot now, Neil. Ah, you are, yeah, you are, you are. And obviously, you know, kind of. And I'll also say, obviously, I have, you know, I've worked with you for a little bit, so I have delivered some some sessions out there, both for kids and for parents, and equally kind of eye opening. And uh, no, I'm, 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 see, I've, it's been a while since I've done it, so I can't you're remember. Okay. The when I tell you, you're just going. Yeah, I do that. Obviously. So yeah. our number one piece of advice for parents everywhere no matter what the challenge is is the relationship with their child yeah you know where parents think it's going to be this tool this piece of technology yeah. there is no technology that will ever replace the role of a parent in a child's life and the tools the settings the the screen time management to all of that that's the technology to support and complement the parent in the relationship with the child and we're very passionate about that no matter what the challenge is yeah because we want them to be responsible when we're not around and we want to make sure that um they make responsible decisions basically so in a nutshell the four ways we go about it are educate innovate collaborate and emulate so yeah. that's how we do it and that's how we reach 4.6 million with volunteers and partners globally 
Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's, it's an incredible programme and those numbers are absolutely, absolutely fantastic. And it's interesting to think that the kind of, it, it, it must have been evolving so much because what, you know, where we are as a, as a kind of, you know, as a community and as a society around technology, when it kind of started all that, you know, kind of uh, over kind of 14, 15 years ago, not everybody was involved and engaged with technology in quite the same way. Definitely not our, not our children. Um, whereas now we're in a very, very different, very different place. Everyone, you know, the, the kind of rise of the digital natives, but still the, the similar challenges are absolutely still there in terms of that education and awareness and just understanding. So it's, it's quite the, the, the cycle of continually changing the details in terms of what people need to do and how they interact. But those fundamentals are, are going to still be exactly the, the same around around communication, around kind of being aware, being sensible in terms of the, taking the right precautions, um, you know, making sure that people kind of have as much knowledge as possible to be able to make the, the best decisions. I'll never say the right decisions, because as you say, it's there's yeah. often no simple right answer. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, if you think of the Industrial Revolution and all, we are in a technological revolution and it's we're not through it and we are the first users of it and uh even as users we see the changes and you're right our messaging and positioning has never changed in we're 16 years doing iskf this year in community and our messaging and positioning has never changed and our number one piece of advice about the relationship and active listening and you know building that and holding on to that with both hands uh, yep. That is the key. And um, our slides and our material and all our content is online and very fancy. And But the message and positioning is still the same. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think obviously one of the things that in being able to reach all of those kind of millions of people is being able to kind of use the power of the, the Trend Micro partner community. So obviously it's, it's not just Trend, but it's it's working with those partners. And that's what we've we've all got to do to be able to leverage as many of those relationships because just trend by yourself you're not going to be able to do to do everything so definitely the kind of the wider cyber security technology um community bit of an onus i suppose on all of us to be able to you know not just work with trend but you know to be able to go out there and um you know leverage the, the expertise that we do have yeah absolutely um i'll give you a brilliant example of um something so if i were to go out and deliver a cyber academy to children in a classroom every week for five weeks, that's five hours. And if I spent my all my days doing that um, and solely that, yeah. um, I would probably get a school done in two months. Yeah. And <clears throat> what we what we did um, is we designed a Cyber Academy bootcamp where we train, it can be our customers, it yeah. can be our channel partners, it can be our service providers, it can be teenagers, right? Yeah. Um, scouts and they come into our office and we do boot camp with them and that means we train them to deliver the cyber academy to kids yeah and they leave with a toolkit and all the stuff the good stuff and all they have to do is practice and prepare and then work and engage with the local school and go in and one school alone that we have trained in the boot camp and we've we've trained hundreds of teens uh, in the last year that come into our office. We do boot camps a lot. One school alone has delivered it to 1,200 kids, the entire 7, 8, 9, 10 age group. Wow, okay. So, you know, the, the, that's just face-to-face -face interaction and the value of training and empowering others in our community. We want to empower others to know, they won't know all the answers, but they know what to do. Yeah. And with teens, for example, or with if you wanted to deliver a parent talk in the morning, just that you have everything to engage in the conversation and community. So the COVID has brought about a lot of online content that can be used. Um, I now do maybe six parent webinars a year and um, I can eat one webinar. We could have anything between 500 and 1600 people yeah. on the call. Um, if I was going out to schools pre-COVID, you know, Parents are busy and yeah. it's hard to get to the school, to get your kids yeah. to school. Yeah. You might get to a meeting. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's recorded, it's on demand. It's got sign language in there if you need it. Um, and uh, it's there for everyone. And, you know, in six, you, you'd get in community face-to-face -face, pre-COVID, 
between 15, 20 to 70, depending on the community turning up for a parent talk. And yeah. I might do 20 to 30 of them a year, and that's 20 to 30 nights of my personal time. Yes, Whereas yeah. now, it's six webinars a year recorded online and thousands of on-demand views afterwards. I mean, technology is really supporting us to reach more into community, to help us scale. And that's what we need. We need to be talking about this in community. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think it's fascinating kind of kind of getting more people involved to be able to deliver the sessions, especially teenagers, because I think that's that's the other thing. We can't just have the you know people who work in cybersecurity kind of effectively talking down of like these are all the things that you should be doing and you're not doing having as broad and diverse and uh, you know not just the audience but broad and diverse in terms of the people going out there and, and talking about it because that's that will that will resonate in different ways with a lot yeah. of people I think and, and people probably a lot of kids will probably listen in a different way if it's uh, somebody yeah. that's more more similar to their own peer group without a doubt and you know if if I heard Neil that you were presenting in my local community and I live in your community I will go and listen to you you know um yeah kids love the teenagers you know the language is different they're more relatable yeah and the impact for teens is that they're learning how to present confidence assertiveness if they're interested in teaching when they get older um managing an event you know and coordinating yeah. organizing and planning and then giving to kids and from their own learnings what they don't want these kids to go through and they can impart to those kids through the through the episode their own pieces of nuggets of advice you know so it's just yeah. powerful it's powerful all around yeah. the feedback's been great so it's just fantastic to do that and anyway anyhow we can pick up that conversation and make sure that people understand the risks out there you know one in four people in the u.s are being um you know they have uh, theft their identities stolen right. um it's huge and it's so easy to happen if you're not aware of what is identity theft does that happen to others yeah that can happen to any one of us how do i protect my personal information online there are simple things you can do to prevent that yeah. and if it does happen there are ways to you know to react and to deal with it and even to check to see if you have personal information on on the dark web leaked there are ways to even check that yes you can you know, yeah. we have id protect uh, ID, IDP from micro.com just go in there it's a free tool put in your phone number and it'll search the dark web real time and it will tell you if you have any data leak and then if you do it will tell you where to go and what to do and the same with your email address and you know so I love giving these free tools out because what what that one does is you may think identity theft is something on the, the telly on the, the yep. latest movie right but when you go into the tool and you just put in your email address and then suddenly you're told that, that that social media account with this email address was leaked in the dark web on this date, yep. that's when it hits home. That's, yep. that's the education right there. Now here's my motivation to make a change in my safety settings and my protection of my personal information. Yep. So it's about getting that motivation, tapping into people's motivations by educating them about the impact and consequences of doing or not doing yeah i think that the scale of it is definitely kind of changed massively and as you say people kind of beginning to understand you know the, the consequences and i think kind of again where where it's evolved that we always thought about cyber crime years ago it, it definitely was something that impacted businesses but it wasn't necessarily how it impacted individuals and obviously you know the kind of the huge impact from a in terms of young people using technology social media and 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 I think there's a, a lot of us that we just because we just don't understand whether it's the dark web that we hear on the news and that sounds terribly scary but is that really anything to do with us you know kind of how does that work um, all the way through to to, to to kids and children using social media whether they should be or whether they shouldn't be they are um, and you know and I think there there is that big gap of kids not necessarily knowing how to use it effectively but. But, you know, generations like us, is, you know, we didn't grow up. We, did, I, You know, there was definitely no social media on my Nokia 6310, um, you know, when, when I had Nokia that. Nokia block, yeah. Sorry? A Nokia block, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah Nokia block, yeah. Actually, the sort of thing you could bury in concrete for five years, dig up, and the battery would still be working. So and you were lucky to have one. Yeah, yeah, no, I was very, I was very, very privileged, yeah. 
So, but you know, I had uh, I, you know, I could play Snake, and that was it. I could maybe send a text message, and no. I know one you're knew. just going off. No, you're just yeah, going off. yeah, exactly. But you know, it's it's such a it's such a different landscape, and it is it's it's one where now that the older generation don't have the knowledge, and it's uh, having to teach the kids. It's having to teach the the older generation as much as possible, so they learn how to, and they've got the, and and sometimes it's just having the language. It's learning how to communicate with kids because they don't understand the terminology and the language and the words and, 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 and the apps and everything. So it's, it's not just having that, it's getting that understanding. So it's not just saying you need to sit down with your kids and talk about it because we, we all know that and we all need to do that. But it's learning how to do it. It's, yes. it's speaking the right, the right words without, so you can get that right engagement. Nobody likes being told what to do. No, no. So that's not going to work. Yep. So it's about that language. And, you know, we had uh, two workshops before Christmas. They were my favourite of the year, nearly, no. um, uh, with senior citizens. And um, I asked them, what is your greatest concern? What would you like to achieve out of today's workshop? And what would you think would be their number one thing they wanted to learn about and understand? Maybe how to talk to their families. How it was it was it social media in terms of being able. It was to do... it was a, an internet safety workshop for senior citizens. Right. And uh, we had a bunch of modules, right, from passwords to factor shopping online, banking, right. phishing scams, all of that, right, ready to go for the workshop. But before I went into it, I just said, "What is your greatest concern? What would you like to learn today? What do you think?" was the biggest thing that was a concern for them that they wanted to figure out. They're, they're, they're digital users now, these guys. Yeah. So I don't know, yeah, the obvious thing might be either kind of just using social media or just, it, or was it the scams and the, you know, the kind of not getting caught out? No, you won't believe it. It was cookies. <laughs> no, I mean, I wouldn't have got that. No, no, in a million who, years, who I would? wouldn't have. And, but you can understand why, if you think about this, right? Every time you click on a website, what's the first thing that pops up in yep. Europe because of yep. GDPR? Yeah, legally okay. mandated. Yep. Accept, reject, or manage. So every time our seniors in the room, in that room, every single one of them said cookies, and the following workshop they said it as well. Yeah. Because they get, they go onto the web and the, is this a safe website? What? Well, what do I do? What? What do I accept? Do I reject? What? What if I don't? What if I do? What do I do? Yeah. No, I mean, that, that you're absolutely, absolutely spot on because nobody's explained what cookies are. No. What they are. Accept all, reject all, do it bespoke, only accept yeah. essential ones. And and all and it's a matter of doing is explaining it to them, yeah. telling them they can set up a weekly thing to delete all the cookies and remove them on their on their search engine. So yeah. it's just, it's, f see, finding where, it, so we went, like we had a ton of modules, like, and this, I had cookies on the module, Neil. Yeah. So, yep. but don't worry. I put it. We put it in there. and We talked yep. about it. But, yep. but, it's one thing you think you know what they need, but listening, Absolutely. you really get yep. to understand what their needs are and where they're at, and you get so much joy out of. Well, that's a, that's actually an easy one. I thought you were going to be asking me, you know. Um, <laughs> so you just don't know where everyone's coming from, and it's the same with parents, and it's the same yep. with teens. The amount, half of teens that I talk to, every time when I do Google quizzes with them, would you know what to do if your if your device was compromised? 50 to 60 percent of them don't know what to do. No. Yeah. You know? and, and then, and, yeah. And then often, you know, and then they can panic and do something wrong. So it, it, it's absolutely having that information kind of up front that they need to be able to, to do. Open up the hood of the engine and just show them right in and explain to them how it all works. Yeah. From risks and threats the cyber act the threat actors and then what they're trying to achieve and why and how the different ways they do it and then how you can protect yourself but it's showing them what and how showing them what and why makes them want to know the how to protect yeah yeah no there's definitely learning of being able to get under the hood and, I, and i'm sure a lot of the organizations that you kind of work with and talk to you know whether it's anything from kind of you know kind of scouts or community organizations or obviously schools I think you know we don't need to don't need to kind of go into the data. We all know that they're dramatically under resourced and under skilled. So mm -hmm. it, it it is a tremendous value that we can kind of collectively all bring because they don't have that knowledge and expertise. Um, especially if you you know kind of like larger secondary schools might have IT staff, but primary schools it's 
whoever knows most gets the job of being, you know, the IT teacher. Yeah, they um, don't have IT departments. Yeah. Yeah. And, the, and scouts and guides, they won't have, they won't have IT teams yeah. ready to go out. So there is a, you know, there's a real kind of, there is such a need out there for this kind of expertise and it's, it's just not a priority for them, yeah, you know, kind of, re, which is fair enough. Yeah. And we're in the cyber industry. We are at an advantage because we're in that place. Yeah. But the content that we deliver has to be almost non-technically complicated. Yeah. Anyone can deliver this. It's designed that way to invoke conversation. Yeah. And the presenter sometimes may not know all the answers and they open up the conversation with the group. And if nobody knows, then it's researched online and they can come back to us or to you and say, I got this question last night and I said, I'll get back to them on it. But, yeah. you know, I guess where we go, we go research online, you know. Yeah. So um, and then. You know, I mean, we don't need to hear this. We know this already. But you look at the, the 22nd of January this year, a bunch of researchers um, came across tw a, a 26 billion record <laughs> records compromise in a, a catastrophic data leak. Right. Yeah. Um, what does that mean for, you know, the world? It means that, you know, they're going to the danger. The danger, I guess, is that these yeah. threat actors, they're going to use it for a wide range of attacks identity yep. theft, sophisticated phishing schemes, targeted cyber attacks, unauthorized access to personal information or private information for you and me. So yep. that'll hit the news and that's what flags, that's why I'll get called on a radio station to talk and explain. And it's what gets attention. And which is, I'm not saying that the news is bad, but it's no. good that it's drawn attention because it's opportunities to have those conversations and to get people to think about things. Yeah, and actually, also get us to think about things in a in a different way. I think that this is one of the things that it can challenge because I think you know not just kind of in a from a, a broader cybersecurity marketing perspective, but even you know a lot of look, there's a, obviously a lot of great technology and platforms out there de designed to deliver security awareness, education, and training just to staff. But we've all seen plenty of examples of you clicked on the you know kind of almost almost kind of trapping users. Oh, you know the, we did a phishing campaign and you clicked on the link and that was bad and you shouldn't have done that and that was obvious and you almost get manipulated it this is a great way of kind of turning that tables and having that open conversation and being challenged and asking questions that we don't necessarily always ask and getting a better understanding of what people actually understand so it's it's not it's not so top down and i think that's that's probably what we're not so good at it's a little bit too much top down at the moment yes and even actually you know it's great talking to senior citizens because we, we talk to them about um, your go the psychology of it. Yeah. You're going, these cyber, these threat actors, they're, they're targeting thousands of people, but someone's going to click that link. Yeah. Because yeah. it's relevant to them. I am waiting for something in the post. <laughs> yeah. And it is really important. And the wedding is tomorrow. And it'll just coincidentally happen. Yeah. By coincidence. And the link is clicked. You're being targeted under pressure in a time frame and you're not thinking straight and you click so just taking that moment and your gut so that's another one your your gut is not highly technical it's no. not a tool it's an internal system that stands to you our gut rarely lets us down our gut instinct and just taking that moment to just you know i had one senior system say that um they got a call that their you know their wi-fi was down but the call was from the Wi-Fi company and uh, you're not going to get it now for two weeks unless you could pay me by Revolut now and we can get it up and running for you. And they did. Yeah. I need Wi-Fi. I have to. I, I, you know, so just taking that moment, paying you on Revolut. Um, yeah. Let me call. Let me call you back on that. You know, just a couple of minutes will not burn anything, you know, so your gut, gut instincts. Yeah, but it's building in those that kind of so people automatically just kind of think of I say best practice, but just like caution and yes. you know, kind of understanding the fundamentals about this stuff can help give people the the tool set they need for. Yeah, that, for that you're thing. they're getting more and more sophisticated. They're getting more and more personal. Hey, Avril, just following up. Um, do you want to meet tomorrow? Sorry, I couldn't make it yesterday. I don't even know this person. They act like they know me. They're getting so right in there, so personal so targeted at us and just your awareness and your vigilance 
and they could be emulating someone in your own office or a family member yeah. you know yeah. and and obviously it's it's kind of almost uh, impossible if not almost against the law now not to have a conversation around cybersecurity and at some point mention ai um, but you know, I mean, but but that's neg- rather than kind of <laughs> us getting into the weeds on AI, it's a perfect example of where where technology and, and kind of the rate of pace of change and and you know, kind of just ordinary people who don't work in the industry, and frankly, people who do work in the industry, just understanding the sheer implications of what this means, and that is it's a good example of why this sort of these sort of uh, kind of programs and initiatives are so important because it is it moves at lightning pace, and and the expectation for everybody to understand of like, oh yeah, we've just unleashed this incredible technology that pre- that we've had AI for a long, long time, and obviously Trend have had it as part of the program for a long time. But now it's available in the hands for, for you know, ordinary people. I'm more than happy to say, you know, I've kind of talked to my eldest daughter about how we can potentially use this as, a, as an additional tool for her homework. Um, you know, and then she shows me, oh, well, it, it's, built in in a, it's built in Snapchat, has AI built into it. It's like, oh, OK, all right. And actually, it's there already. Yeah, and actually... It's it does, it does, it does, you Valentine's for your... Yeah. And it does answer oh. physics questions. I can confirm that as well. That's quite, that's quite helpful. Can, but it's, yeah. It, it's but like, it's just getting yeah. to grips with this so quickly, isn't uh, it? That's the challenge. Absolutely. And I think, you know, we're using it already. We don't even realize half the time. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, there are dangers. There are risks associated, as has been publicly discussed in yeah. forums. Um, but there are benefits too. And it will hugely positively impact our lives. Uh, it's all about it's how we use it. The responsibility is on us to be yeah. responsible with it. And, um, you know, so people are looking at this in so many different ways. You, careers, jobs that are going to become obsolete, um, new roles coming down the track. Um, and, you know, the future, wh- where is the future going to be with our mobile device site? We're never going to type again, Neil. No, no. We'll never type again. We'll never send an email. It'll do it all for us. It'll, you know, that, that's just the basics. I mean, yep. it'll set up and create a, an app there for me about, you don't even have to give a code right now. ChatGPT no. will create an app without even you giving it the coding. Yeah. It'll do the coding and create the app for you. Like, it'll design a piece of art for you. It'll, it'll create anything you want. So yeah. it's there already, but it's how we can incorporate that into our lives where it benefits community in a positive way and and then outside of community that we use it responsibly yeah yeah absolutely so i mean so i'm i'm definitely hoping that plenty of people are going to be going to be listening to this and then hopefully kind of thinking about kind of getting involved so i suppose how can we you know other than obviously kind of contacting trend and getting it, getting involved in this kind of what what is involved in kind of getting you know kind of getting involved in the program learning more getting in front of people because i'd i'd also imagine that a lot of people will kind of have a level of expertise whether they're in not necessarily in technical roles but in sales and marketing or operations but they they work within kind of cyber security mm. but there is a bit of a reluctance to necessarily go from going oh i kind of know that or maybe just telling your auntie at a party uh, don't click on uh, facebook aren't giving away free holidays and that's not a real competition and all of that to actually then going up and standing in front of kids which you know having done the program before that's quite intimidating um and having kind of 50 kids all wanting to put their hands up and ask you about hackers because hackers are obviously very exciting that's the cool stuff yeah that's the currency neil to get them yeah. listening yeah that's the hook that you need absolutely so you know kind of how can people get involved and, and kind of, you know, kind of get past that, that fear of kind of like, of, turn, of, of feeling, oh, do I now have to be the expert and get in front of people? Because I think, you know, that, 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 that's, that's a big challenge, I imagine, for a lot of people. Yeah. So you do not have to be a technical genius to be doing this. And, you know, if there's something for everyone, right? Um, so I'll give you, I'll give you an example. We have volunteers that say, Give me kids. I, I just sick of grown ups. I, I like I, I'll do any. I love work with kids. Just give me give me kids any day. And then I've got volunteers that are like, I, I, I'll do the grown ups to keep me with. Yeah. And then you've got, you know, if you consider um, a lot of us are the sandwich generation where we're looking after our kids, but we're also looking after our parents devices. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So we're IT support for our parents. 
Absolutely. And you see the challenges to the point of almost discrimination that they, they just, they, they're half afraid to ask you. They don't like burdening you, asking you to do their taxes or their, their insurance things. And, you know, so we are that same generation. And some volunteers actually want and prefer to work with older people. Yeah. Um, so there's something there for everyone. And, you know, we've had um, heads of Trend Micro business units that have said, I find it so much easier to talk to my enterprise customers yeah. because of ISKF, because I have to simplify my language when I'm delivering and presenting to kids, to parents, to teachers. The language has to be non-corporate. It has, yeah. So you have to translate. And that's the key here. The language has to be plain, uh, explaining things, practical. And that's why the content is designed in that way. You do not have to be a tech genius. And it's fun. Yeah. And it's engaging. There is fun videos for the kids. You play it. You're not doing all the talking. In yeah. fact, what your job there is to facilitate conversation. You have questions to ask them after they watch the video. So you can, if you'd like, you can... You can decide you want to do a parent talk in your local church, your local school hall, your local hockey club or golf club, whatever it is. You want to do a pair internet safety parent talk. You may decide you want to do a webinar with Neil from E92, yep. co-host. And let's do an internet safety talk across the UK and invite everyone to join us and record it for everyone and have English sign language there to support. Um, it's an hour and a half of talk time and I can give you everything. You yeah. might decide, yeah, OK, grown ups aren't for me. I want to do with kids. So you can over if you have kids in seven to ten years of age and you want to go in there and you want to deliver a program to them an hour a week for five weeks and you can certify them at the end and give them sticker booklets and have great fun with them. And that's that's an hour a week for five weeks. Um, yeah. Or you could decide to deliver something to teens. Or you could decide to have a workshop with senior adults. It yeah. could be one full day or it could be two hours every month, yeah. depending on what the needs are. Or, and here's the fun bit. Okay, you ready for the fun bit now, Neil? Yeah, absolutely. If you're an organization and you have a lot of employees and you're thinking, I, I want to do something for community this year, we want to do something, you could have a family day. Yep. Yeah. Um, you could have a bring your kid to work day. So yep, you could bring, invite your employees to bring their kids in and have a cyber academy day. They yep. get tagged, they get to work in the company for a day and they come out as cyber academy champions with a certificate yep. uh, and a sticker book. They love the stickers. Yep. Or you could host the same, but bring your parent to work day. Which I think is incredible. <laughs> and you choose, maybe yep. they choose the modules. You have yep. the modules and they choose which ones. And if it goes down to success, you might do it every quarter yeah. or every six months or something, depending on when the, the quiet time is. So there's so much there, Neil, and we have everything. It's just about, do you want to get involved? Are you connected into community? Yeah. Get in there. Do it with a part, co-host, co-present. Do it with oh, someone exactly. else yeah. you're not no, on your own. You share it. Absolutely. Sure. But I think the key thing is you don't need to be an expert. I think that's absolutely the, you know, the, the fundamental. The most important thing is wanting to get out there and talk with others and yeah. engaging. That's the that's the, the, the fundamental. Absolutely. And if you don't like talking in general, presenting, you can help organize the events, coordinate, communicate, get it set up and prepare all the prints, the stuff to bring to the kids or the, you know, whatever it is, you know, events. Yeah. manage that, you know. And as well as that, I can't I can't not say this. Our Cyber Academy, thanks to our volunteers all around the world, yeah. is now translated into 19 languages. Yeah, yeah. there we go. So, so there's, there's, no, there's, like. there's no excuse. There is no excuse. There's absolutely no excuse. None. So, well, I mean, that's a, a, a fantastic way to, to, to finish up. So, absolutely, you know, we, we always kind of talk about kind of if there's any information obviously get in touch with us for questions but i think this one more than any episode that we've done we'll put all the details in the show notes and what okay. have you but absolutely it would be fantastic if we can get more people help add to that um kind of four million plus number absolutely and you know and i think it's yeah. and it's not a one-off i think you know you know we need to kind of keep going because we can see the rate of change the technology that we all talk about when we're talking about you know products and solutions to our customers 
um, that rate of change affects absolutely all of us as, and we're all just individuals. We we finish working, but then we go home. Um, you That's know, when the real job starts. People. Yep. Absolutely. So we need to get the conversation going, and we need to keep it going in community all the time. That's what it's all about. That's brilliant. Smashing. Thank you very much, Avril. That's absolutely Thank you for really, really interesting. That's brilliant. And then hopefully we'll get you a few more volunteers. Listen, th thanks to you, it's going to hit five million before the middle of the year. There you go. That's the <laughs> <laughs> that's the commitment. Thanks very much. Uh, thanks, thanks, thank you. Everybody. thanks, everybody, for listening. Don't forget to look out for the next episode. Um, do like and uh, like and subscribe. Do share. Um, but for now, thanks very much.